-hmm. And at the end of the night, there's one more act on the program. It says, special surprise performance. And um, a drag queen comes out on stage, a grown-up. She's wearing this long red wig and a black sequined leotard and kind of sheer, that has sheer arms with feathers around her wrists. Mm -hmm. And she comes out and does an Iris Chacon number, this Puerto Rican icon. And this is the sound of that? This is, so this is the sound of that. This is actually the sound of when she gets down on the ground and rolls over onto all fours and rolls back onto her back and puts her two legs up in the air and then opens them and you can see her underwear. And to just be clear, there are elementary school kids here. Yes, yes. It, this is a school performance. There are tons of kids. And on the program, it doesn't say who this person is, but it turns out a lot of people in this school know this person because he is a well-known dad in the school. He's the president of the PTA. Long-time president. This is actually his very last term as PTA president. He's the outgoing PTA president. Anna tried to reach the guy, but never talked to him. Jashi heard about the story in a tabloid newspaper, The Daily News, under this headline. Parents horrified after man performed surprise drag show at Manhattan School Talent Event. And that article has descriptions like, parents at families' laughter turned to disbelief and then dismay as Quinones, the PTA dad, opened his mouth and exercised his tongue in a suggestive manner while lip-syncing the Chacon number. Full talent show in Manhattan taking a raunchy turn. So the story, the story spreads to TV. It has, you know, a brief enthusiastic moment on local TV. This outlandish drag performance put on by the PTA president. And, and all the TV reporters talked to this same mother, the one who complained about it. He laid on his back, he let, raised his legs, opened his legs wide open. What made you in your head think that that was appropriate for elementary school students? Mrs. Morales' report card for both the school and the district, an F, and a triple X. That is a like perfect quote for teenagers right there, I have to say. <laughs> it was like she was waiting for the chance. Yeah. Um, it was clear from some of the other coverage that lots of people in the school like this guy, know him really well, and that some people liked the performance. The performance was spot on, spot on. He did everything like Iris Chacon would have done. Was it okay in this environment? I think they've seen a lot worse. Have they? From East Harlem, Vanessa Murdoch, CBS 2 News. Okay, so you heard about this thing that happened, and it interested you, it hit something in you, and your reaction was... Um, different. It totally captivated me. I thought about him so much, and I did not have any of those reactions. I didn't feel like it was super scandalous. I just felt totally taken by it because I spend a lot of time watching shows like this. I have two young kids, I have younger sisters, I do reporting in schools. In fact, in that same month as the drag performance, Hannah went to a preschool end of the year ceremony and performance a kindergarten stepping up ceremony, a middle school graduation, a middle school talent show, and a magic after school program performance. That was just June. And that was when I saw this video. And I, I feel like I spend most of the time sitting through those shows just waiting for something like this to happen. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe something exciting and unexpected will happen. Because those shows are pretty boring. They're like mind numbing. And then there's the one tiny, tiny moment where your kid does something and no matter what they do, that's amazing. But then you have to kind of continue to perform to be as amazed at every other kid for the next sometimes three hours. So all, all I ever hope for is something in one of these shows will happen that is unexpected. And I know this is not the surprise that people in this school wanted. Like I get that it is sexual, their children, it's drag, it's gay, which is probably even scarier to some parents, like that whole thing, I understand, I get that. But? <laughs> but I feel like the thing I liked about it is not just that it's surprising, but it's him. Like, it is this guy, this is a real thing that is happening. He is getting on stage and sharing a part of himself with his community. He's being real. 
He's being real. Yeah, he's being real. And that's what you want, right? He's kind of modeling the thing that you want from these shows, is that some kid will get up there and do some weird, strange thing that is just themselves, that is just true, just feels like who they are. You're saying that because you've actually seen that? Well, I was thinking after watching this video that one of the most moving things I've ever seen on stage actually was at a school talent show years ago that I had, hadn't thought about for a long time, where this girl got up, she was maybe t 10, and she was super shy, she was like one of those kids that you're kind of surprised that she's getting on stage in the first place, and she seemed nervous, and then the music comes on and she kind of like very confidently moves into this strange like interpretive dance of Billie Jean <laughs> where she's like Michael Jackson yeah Michael yeah. Jackson but she's not wearing she's not wearing a fedora she's wearing a beret the sort of most striking part of it was just that she was super confident and she's like kind of leaning over like she's like an elderly person and moving her arms back and forth like like octopus arms I remember she had braids like purple braids that were also swinging back and forth and people lost it. Like, everybody went totally crazy for her. Not because she was good. Like, she wasn't doing the moves very well. But it, it was her. This was, like, a true thing that was happening. This was a person who the stage gave her a place to perform something that she's interested in, something who she really is, something that just is real. It's true. But a day on a radio program, that is what we aspire to. That is where we're heading. We are leaving behind the obligatory, the half-baked, the phoned-in, the superficial. We leave behind the meh. And we turn our backs on the word meh because the word meh is meh itself. And instead, we have stories of people seeking out what is real, what is true. In some places, you might not expect that. What you find, what you feel, what you know to be real, stay with us.